We're joined by Carl Warren. He's the president and CEO of the North Carolina Railroad. He's in Carteret County, as a matter of fact, in Beaufort, as we uh, initiate this interview today. And it's a pleasure to have him join us. It's also an interesting opportunity for the community to sort of get a refresher on one of the key economic components of Carteret County, but I would say also of eastern North Carolina, and then writ large, the state of North Carolina, and that is the North Carolina Railroad. It's an interesting product. It's an interesting company. We'll get into that detail here in just a moment. But first, Carl, welcome. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you, Lockwood. It's a pleasure to be here today. Well, uh, this is a great opportunity for folks in the area who see periodically the trains as they come through to learn a little something about the North Carolina Railroad. And uh, at first, I want to start off with the state of North Carolina actually owns a railroad? That is correct. That, yes, the, I, uh, the state owns the railroad. They own uh, 100% of our stock, but the company is a private corporation. Okay. So uh, let's talk about what is the North Carolina Railroad to begin with, and why did you select uh, Carter County, as a matter of fact, Moorhead City and Beaufort as uh, a site for uh, your most recent board meeting? Sure. Well, the North Carolina Railroad stretches from Charlotte all the way to Moorhead City. Uh, it's a distance of about 317 miles. The right-of-way is about 200 feet wide, and so we're the owners of that right-of-way. And then freight service on the railroad is provided by Norfolk Southern, a major Class One rail carrier. And then we also have some uh, passenger services that run between, you know, Charlotte and and Raleigh as well. All right. So in essence, the North Carolina Railroad is a landlord and you are leasing, uh, if you will, track time and or space to alternative uh, carriers. That's that's right. That's right. And, you know, Norfolk Southern uh, leases the majority of the footprint than Amtrak operates on Norfolk Southern under an agreement that Amtrak and Norfolk Southern have. All right. Well, you know, the concept that the state owns a railroad, how how regular is that, or is that novel? It's pretty novel. Uh, you know, there there's maybe one other example I can think of where uh, a state owns a railroad, and that's up in Alaska. Uh, the Alaska Railroad was... Uh, built by the by the federal government and it's it's actually owned and operated by the state of the of alaska so they they own the property but they also operate the trains all right now of course north carolina is now a rapidly growing state uh, as you well know and i i I'm want to curi- i'm curious as to how influential the railroad is to the state's economy but I, I failed to uh, give you an opportunity to tell us a little something about Carl Warren. So before I get to that question, a little bit about Carl Warren. How did you end up in this position as president and CEO of the North Carolina Railroad and your background? Sure. Well, I, uh, I've been in the transportation business for, for about 25 years. I worked for a, uh, a railroad in the western United States called Burlington Northern Santa Fe. I also worked for Port Authority out west called the Port of Portland. And then after I after I was at those two places, I worked for CSX Transportation, which is NS's primary freight competitor in the in the eastern US. I've basically been involved in operations planning, commercial sales and marketing, and economic development for my entire career. And the type of work that the North Carolina Railroad does was sort of a perfect merger or marriage of all of those experiences. And it had the added bonus of allowing me to return to the state where I was born. Uh, I was born in, at uh, Rex Hospital, the old one, mm-hmm. in, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, so it's for, for my wife and I, it's just a thrill to be in North Carolina again. We dearly enjoy our life here. In some regards, this uh, segues right into my question to you. But and by the way, welcome back to North Carolina. And we're going to talk here for, in a moment about the income and pardon me, the impact of the railroad for Eastern North Carolina. But I want to start with the fact that North Carolina is a fast-growing state. Much of it in the service-related area. Railroads are not really associated, if you will, with just purely service, it's product movement, it's people movement. So how important is 
the railroad to North Carolina. What what are the key elements that, well, not only the North Carolina Railroad provides, but just rail systems in general? How important is that to economies now? I think rail, rail systems are extraordinarily important because, you know, most manufacturing operations require the handling of, of raw materials. You know, you think you think about whether it's making cans to hold beverages or making cars, you know, the, the metal to do that, you know, oftentimes comes in by rail. Sometimes the finished product, like automobiles, for example, gets shipped out by rail. If you think about international trade and the movement of containers, the railroads provide a vital service in terms of moving those containers from uh, port facilities to uh, inland destinations and also handling exports. I think probably one of the one of the most important things that railroads do is is handling really heavy bulk commodities. So agricultural products in, in particular are are staple in the railroad business as well. I mean just in terms of moving corn and soybeans and so forth. That's true on the North Carolina Railroad. Moving liquids uh, is another thing that, that the, the railroad does. And these are things which, you know, they're, they're, it's more cost-effective to do that by rail than it is to, to rely exclusively on trucking to do it. And, of course, it's arguably the most efficient is by, by water, second most efficient form of transportation by rail. And looking at your experience, both in the port's capacity as well as in rail and marketing, North Carolina, of course, has some unique entities associated with it. It has two state ports authorities, and I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm aware that you're going to be visiting the Moorhead City Port here today as well in your visit to the region. Is North Carolina uniquely positioned to take advantage, and, and is this a matter of taking a, a new look at how North Carolina is uh, developing its economy? You know, I think one of the things that, that our company was involved in and I'd love to take credit for this, but honestly, this is a foundation that was was built before I arrived, was we used our unique capabilities as a private corporation to benefit the state by playing a key role in assembling the mega site where the Toyota uh, announcement, the Toyota factory, the battery factory, is now locating and, and continuing to develop as a major job generator. We use those basic capabilities that the railroad had to to assemble land, be nimble, move quickly to not only help assemble the site, but also partner with the, the, folk, the folks out, out around Greensboro to ultimately recruit the tenant, and obviously side by side with the, with the State Department of Commerce and mm-hmm. the Economic Development Partnership. But, but what I think what I think builds a foundation best for success in this state is continuing to create alignment and partnership similar to what has been done with Toyota and so many of the other success stories that we have been experiencing, reading about, appreciating the arrival of in the last few years. It it wasn't always that way here. I used to look at North Carolina from the outside when I worked at CSX, and I would say that over the last seven years or so, you know, North Carolina has, has gone from being a very good place to being an excellent place for this type of development, and it's really exciting to see it. So I'm hearing from you that the North Carolina Railroad is more than just in the railroad business. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we we uh, we also have been, I would say that we're kind of in the economic development business mm-hmm. because, you know, we the way that we deliver benefit to our shareholders is through the management of economic development programs. And so we have one program called NCRR Invest, mm-hmm. and that's a competitive program that we use to help companies locate in North Carolina and also add to the incentives that uh, states and local governments are providing to help win these deals with a focus on rail. But, you know, one thing about the state's success is that we got to make sure that we stay ahead of the curve in terms of having shovel-ready sites. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we've done recently is start up a program called Build Ready Sites. And and that the whole point of that is to partner with communities to create sites that are uh, low risk and ready to go so that we can uh, locate companies that that use rail. So it's really... uh, 
right. it's really very gratifying to be involved in that. Well, we'll use the word synergistic. Uh, we're talking with Carl Warren. He's the president and CEO of the North Carolina Railroad. He's in the area today visiting with the uh, North Carolina Board of, pardon me, the North Carolina Railroad Board of Directors. We're going to get to a topic here associated with local issues here in a moment. And with that, Carl, thank you for doing this. I do appreciate it. Let's talk about your visit here to Carter County. I know that you're going to be touring the Moorhead City Port. Of course, uh, you have the port facilities in Wilmington. Uh, But ostensibly, as I understand it, based on your description of the North Carolina Railroad, which is a basically the uh, state's uh, control of a rail line, starts in Charlotte, sweeps up through Greensboro, the triad, through the triangle, then down to the coast, passing through Kinston, Goldsboro, New Bern, and then concluding or terminating or starting your choice of uh, direction in Moorhead City. You're going to be visiting the Moorhead City Port. Do you see there's a greater opportunity or or are there uh, greater opportunities in the future for the Moorhead City Port in relationship to the rail line? Well, I don't know that I can answer that question definitively today. All we know really is that um, you know this is a this is a part of our line um, that has not seen a lot of traffic growth in the last few years. But but with the uh, the deep water, the long history that the port had, our our view was that we probably needed to to come visit and see what was there and try to understand what was there to see if there was a possibility of doing some more uh, rail-related development uh, involving the, the port. It's a, it's a great resource, but we wanted to make sure that we could you know, put it in context with what the railroad is and what the railroad does. You mentioned earlier that, of course, the, the form of products or the type of products uh, delivered by the North Carolina Railroad or by rail systems writ large, but obviously, mm-hmm. obviously for the North Carolina Railroad, you mentioned agriculture, and of course, agriculture is the number one product in North Carolina. We also have now a growing interest in the auto industry. Do you see that there may be some opportunities in light of the fact that there's a great deal of concern about food services and food resources, and North Carolina, again, being a major agricultural source? Do you see growth in those areas? And you mentioned our cars, the automobile industry, and Toyota. There's also discussions possibly of North Carolina being a an import facility for possibly foreign car manufacturers or possibly an export facility is that in the conversation by any chance yeah I think that the you know I think we've got to study each of those each of those markets very carefully mindful of you know what the port's capable of doing as well as is what's what's going to work from a community perspective but I would make the general observation that you know, if you look up and down the port, if you or down up and down the coast, mm-hmm. you know, starting up in in New York and going all the way down to Florida, um, you know, and even looking in in North Carolina at Wilmington, we've got multiple container facilities. And if anything, those container facilities have been growing. And as they grow, they also displace the handling of other types of cargo. Mm-hmm. And so what I, what I think that does for a port like Moorhead City is create the opportunity to investigate, hey, are there, are there types of cargo that are a, a really good fit for this port? And it could be, you know, it could be roll-on, roll-off cargo, um, like you were talking about, which is, you know, automobiles, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, components associated with the you know, the, the wind industry. Um, there's a lot of different things that, that could go there, but I, I think it would take the, you know, the, the Port Authority and, and folks in the community to really figure out where they want to be and what they want to do. Well, uh, obviously you're in the community and greatly appreciate the fact that the, you've selected this as an opportunity to introduce, if you will, the Board of Directors to the uh, community. As we wrap things up with you, and again, Carl Warren with us, yeah. uh, president and CEO of the uh, North Carolina Railroad. Looking forward, obviously, uh, we're, we're challenged by the economy, uh, inflation, things of that nature. Uh, the future for uh, not only rail service, but specifically the North Carolina Railroad. Uh, is it challenged uh, or are these uh, basically opportunities in, in the form of a challenge? You know, I kind of, I kind of think that, 
you know, there's there's no no perfect, you know, everlasting economy. Everything moves in cycles. Mm-hmm. And 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 there there are so many good things that have happened around the state in the last several years that that I, I feel like there's a lot of very positive momentum even with these headwinds. But you know, as we look at our railroad property, it's been pretty strong all the way from Charlotte over to I-95, but east of 95, we want to make sure that, that this railroad is a viable part of the future of eastern North Carolina. And so we're, we're really trying to build relationships and connections to better understand what's happening here and look for ways that we can work together. Well, thank you for your time today and uh, for, again, one more time, selecting this area as an opportunity for a, a board meeting. You're meeting there in Beaufort. But uh, I know that you've visited some of the areas as well. Carl Warren, again, President and CEO of the North Carolina Railroad with us today. Carl, best to you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me, and it's, it's really an honor to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you as well. Thank you.